Let's talk about games, shall we? Arizona Sunshine, developed by Vertigo Games and Jay Walkers Interactive. Arizona Sunshine was released December 6, 2016, and is a virtual reality game that puts you in the place of an unknown survivor. Oh, man. Oh, whoa. Good morning there, ugly. <clears throat> Who is alone and stuck in Arizona after the zombie apocalypse. While exploring, he faces hordes of zombies and at one point finds a radio, only to turn it on to find out that there's a possibility of other survivors being out there. Alright, let's see if this still works. Someone's broadcasted something, but... What? Let's stop a moment and think about that. He had to have been alone for some time, because he had started talking to the indebted and even gave them names. Imagine being in that situation and hearing that glimmer of hope over the radio. Even if it's a small chance that you may find another human being, someone on the other side of that radio either calling for help or offering help to other survivors. As you continue playing, you can pick up different types of guns as well as dual-wield pistols, shotguns, machine guns, and even some grenades. Though the throwing mechanic in this game isn't very good and the melee has a lot to be desired. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Grenades. That throw fucking sucked. You mostly have to rely on your guns to get you from point A to point B. That means you gotta make a lot of noise. And you know those zombies, they love the noise. You can tell how much health your character has by his watch. There's a gauge on there that tells you how much percentage health your character has. If you end up getting too much damage, you can also heal yourself by finding hamburger patties that are on barbecue pits and stored inside a fridge. You can also use the watch to get out of the game when you're ready to stop playing. The movement controls are a bit tricky, as you need to use different buttons on the controls for your hands to move, strafe, or back up. By pushing just one, you move rather slowly. It took me a while to understand if you double up on these buttons, it'll end up moving faster, which makes the game a bit easier when it comes to dealing with the undead. I ended up playing this game with my headset on, and the sounds in this game get you pumped up to kill zombies for sure. I mean, it's not really all that scary until you're in the mines and can barely see. Then your own imagination takes over, and you're constantly looking behind you to make sure zombies aren't coming from behind. Like, I've, this is probably one of the worst places you can go for a zombie apocalypse, in my opinion. A generator. Nice. Maybe it still works. The sound adds a little more to the virtual reality experience, making you feel like you're in the middle of a zombie apocalypse. In the original version of this game, you had this sort of point-and-click option to move. Clicking on a space would more or less teleport you to where you wanted to go to. In January 2017, there was an update to the game that made more fluent free roaming an option. That being said, moving around this game takes some getting used to. Once you are used to it though, you're ready to rock and roll. The game has several modes to play, some of which are DLC that you have to pay for, but we won't get into those as I've not played them. The modes that come with the game are Horde Mode and the Story Campaign, and both can be played in multiplayer. So you can kill zombies with a buddy. One of the things I've noticed in the beginning of the game, and I have to say this, is that a lot of the zombies aren't wearing clothing. Why are they half naked? I don't get, like, do zombies not wear clothes in this universe? I mean, I get Arizona's pretty hot, but why almost naked zombies? It must be because I was playing on a lower difficulty. It was only later in the game that I started noticing zombies wearing armor, helmets, and protective gear. In the campaign, there are times you'll need to pick up things such as keys or other objects to continue to the next part of the story. You may even have to piss off a horde of zombies from time to time. One of the cool things about that is that you can use your surroundings to protect you if need be. Running around a car or something like that makes for some pretty funny gameplay. Fuck, 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 fuck! Here 
Eat a dick! Like I had mentioned earlier, the game takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, it's a very fun game to play. I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10 in my rating scale. There were so many things they could have worked on a bit more, like being able to interact with the environment better, better use of melee weapons and the throwing mechanics. But looking at this as only a zombie shoot 'em up, I'd say they did what they set out to do. Even despite some of the drawbacks of the game mechanics, I would say I'd recommend this game. It's a very fun virtual reality game to play and it was a very fun experience. So if you have a virtual reality headset and are interested in this type of game, definitely check it out. You'll probably have fun with it. Thanks again you beautiful nerds for joining us on another episode of Let's Talk About Games. This was my first virtual reality review for a game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, we'll see you on the next Let's Talk About Games.